So now, first of all, if we look at what a signal processing paradigm. In signal processing, what actually happens is that we have some input and we have some output and we do some sort of manipulation and processing in the middle. In this lecture series, we are going to analyze how actually we can have different representations of filters and how can we split we can do all the manipulation on the input signal in terms of wavelength, perspective wavelengths. Especially, we will move on to Haar wavelength and the Stabochi's wavelength. But before we do all that, let us first look at how we can think of a signal. If you play any sound on VLC player or any player, you will find some sort of some signal like this. Okay. This is some sort of a speed signal, okay, or uh, whatever, orchestra and everything. Now this is time, this is x of t, or uh, this is the a, y and z. So now if we look at this thing, if I take, you know Fourier transform, if I take Fourier transform, how will I get this spectrum? I will get a spectrum of frequency, something like this. But is it useful? Just tell me. If I analyze the frequency of this 0 to 50 minutes or 50 seconds, okay at least, 50 second signal, how many times does the frequency change? How less is this magnitude spectrum able to represent the complete, uh, what we sell, information which is in this uh, signal, peak signal. In that sense, the Fourier transform is failure. Not uh, complete, but partially at least a failure to get a complete picture. So in that sense, we need some sort of uh, understanding as to how to move from one sense, one frame of analysis to another frame. So different scientists do different things. The most intuitive thing which you can think of from now is that suppose a speech is changing its frequency. For example, let me draw, just emphasize. Now this is a low frequency, this is suddenly high frequency. Sort of, something. Now, if I take a small snap of this signal, take its Fourier transform. If I take a small snap of this signal, so in sense if we cut the signals into pieces and take the Fourier transform, then we will get a better holistic picture. And that is nothing but what we tell as windowed Fourier transform. It is nothing but to get a holistic picture. So what we do is that we sort of divide the signal into small small chunks and take its Fourier transform. That's what we do in window Fourier transform. And in other ways what we can look is that we take, this is a, a general sense of how we do and if we took, take a continuous window Fourier transform then this is how we can do. Just let me explain. Are you getting what is the problem? The problem is that a Fourier transform fails to analyze this completeness. If I take Fourier transform of this whole signal, I will get a mix of high frequency and low frequency. Now, 
can I say that this frequency is middle frequency, this whole thing is, so whenever I try to reduce it in, uh, whenever I take the whole picture, I am able to not get the information. So that's why we then signed this mathematicians and this processing guys did something called window Fourier transfer. What we do is that we take some moving, some window, let me take rectangular window. So now what they did is that they moved this window across this thing, this stuff and they multiplied this uh, this part of moving along with this and they mapped that point into uh, the frequency in that stuff. For example, let me explain you how. I take this, this is not 0, this has moved from 0 to 2 suppose. Now if I multiply this with this, I get this much signal. Whatever is the Fourier transform this, I map it here. Suppose, uh, let me tell, according to color or something like that. Okay? So, this is, this value I map in matrix. This is 0 in frequency domain. This is time and this is frequency. So this time frequency analysis first time came in picture because of this ambiguity which was involved in Fourier transform. So now I take a window, I take this thing, this stuff, I take its Fourier transform and I map it here. Let us let us say the Fourier transform comes out to be 3, 2, 1, 2, 1, 0, something, some sort of it. So we represent this by some sort of a color. So let me say that red is high. Then this is low. So this is how it got gets mapped. Okay. So then I move this window a little bit further. Multiply it with this. Take this Fourier transform of this. Let me say that the that the frequency has getting got an increase. So I, what can I tell that this high region or this max, uh, that, uh, the frequencies are getting shifted towards the ends and not towards the center which is the 0 DC component. Okay. Then the frequency got increased further. So now if I do this then you can see that high frequency components are gradually increasing. So in that sense, this window Fourier uh, transform, what it does is that it takes a small window, does multiplication with the signal and accordingly it maps the whole Fourier transform into that point. So in that sense, this is how uh, a sort of what we tell a window Fourier transform function. This is also called uh, this uh, as short time Fourier transform of uh, uh, some sense of short time Fourier transform. Now let us try to mathematically understand what we are doing. We have got an overall feel of how it is happening, but now we have to get some sort of mathematical base to it. So now what am I doing actually? I am taking a window, this signal, I am taking this signal, anything, index of t. I am taking a window which is centered at suppose, let me take q. This window is centered around u and uh, what this, uh, this and then I take this Fourier transform of this whole stuff by multiplication with it. So let the window be G. Okay, let G be the window. Or G of T represents the untranslated window. Untranslated means that it is centered at zero initially. Window. What 
if I have to move this translation to any point, then what will I do? I will just shift it to some point U. So what is right shift? It is nothing but G of T minus E. So it is shifted to some arbitrary point U. And then we will plot, we will get some value in time when the window is shifted by U we will get some some sort of a frequency to it and let that frequency for uh, what we tell simplicity let me take it let me take the uh, variable as this changing variable as theta at any point at arbitrary point for analysis okay but let me not confuse you right now but this is how i'm doing so what will be the Fourier transform? I am multiplying it x of t into g of t minus u e raised to the power j omega t this integration this will give me a function this is the Fourier transform formula now there are in earlier sort of Fourier transform, we simply had x of omega. But now we have another variable, which is how much I am shifting. x of w comma u. Because as soon as I shift this u, this value of the frequency spectrum changes. And for better understanding, what we write this as zeta. Z. Okay. So just just it's just a convention so this x of zeta comma u is something sort of uh, this this it is shifted by u and the frequency at the zeta position is some will be something will be some value which i will be getting let me explain it okay so this is nothing but a window fourier transform where we translate something by u multiply it and take the frequency uh, the Fourier transform of it. For example, if I take this this youth component, I multiply it, I will get some value, take Fourier transform and try to find what is the value. This will be something like this, okay? Let me take the Fourier transform. Okay. It comes something like this. So here, this heights and lows will are represented by some color. So the value at u, let this value be 5. So I put this matrix value 5 here. This this value is 4, so let me put this 4. So in that sense, I create this length, okay? I can show you, demonstrate you of how it looks. But for now, just think of it as like, this is x, this, this is u, this is zeta, and the values are coming up. Okay, so in that sense, this this whole matrix is designed. This is not actually a two dimension, but this is time, frequency, and x of u comma zeta. This is time parameter. This is frequency parameter. So in that sense, what actually is happening? That whenever I get this stuff, something like that. Okay. Now the, the frequency value at this particular youth position of time and zeta position in frequency is this value. Are you getting me? So in that sense, what are we doing? Can you tell me what are we doing? We are doing a joint time frequency analysis. Analysis. And this is something which we must understand is very very important when you do some speech processing it is very very important when you do some wavelet stuff so if you understand this you have understood a lot of stuff so again just to explain you what this time frequency analysis means I draw a three dimensional plot if I am able to let me see
भी सुनाओ वेन सुनाओ वट डज दिस मीन दैट वेन आई शिफ्ट द विंडो टू दिस टू दिस यू I get a sort of um, what we tell. I sort of get a Fourier transform, and let me place this here. So I get this, place it here. Then I move this window and multiply it with this x t. Whatever Fourier transform, this was u one. Okay, this is placed at u one. When I move this window to u two, some other u two, and multiply it u two, then I get some other response. Okay, let me call this point as u two. Then I get some other response. Let me say I get response something like this. So in that sense, what I do is that I keep mapping this, this uh, whatever the transforms, the values of the transforms I get here, the Fourier transforms in uh, just in in compactly packed ways, and this u one u two I keep. Just doing the same, and this is what we tell it as short time Fourier transform, or we can also write it as S F. Okay, short time Fourier transform. So, I will just explain what this is in the further lecture, but for now, just.